Alright, in this video, I'm going to finish off, uh, it's going to be part two of the generalized chain rule, so I'm going to finish off the examples that I was working on a second ago. I'm going to continue finding the other partial derivatives. So, if you want to see part one, where I kind of go through all the gory details, um, there should be another video here floating around. So, again, um, what we are doing, so, we're finding chain rule, doing the chain rule. So here again, z is a function of x and y. And in turn, x is a function of u, v, and w, and y is a function of u, v, and w. So you definitely probably want to see the first part of this to make some sense out of this, but just to cut to the chase here. So what we want to do is, in this example, I'm going to find the partial derivative of z with respect to v. Okay. So now I start at z and I follow all the branches down until I get to v. So I'll follow those branches down. So again, the first one is going to correspond to the partial of z with respect to x. And then this next branch is going to correspond to the partial of x with respect to v. And then I've got the partial of z with respect to y. And then the partial of y with respect to v. Okay, so these are the things that I have to multiply and then add together. So it says the partial of z with respect to v it says I get the partial of z with respect to x times the partial of x with respect to v. And then I add onto that the partial of z with respect to y. And then I multiply that by the partial of y. And I wrote y twice there, so sorry, it should be the partial of y with respect to v. Okay. So I calculated the partial of z with respect to x and the partial of z with respect to y in the other video, but let's go ahead and talk about it here. So the partial of z with respect to x, that means I'm, I'm treating x as a variable, y as a constant. So again, it looks like I should get 2x plus y cubed for that part. And then I'll take the partial derivative of x with respect to v, so now I'm treating v as my variable. Everything else is a constant. So the w cubed, when I take the derivative, will dis just disappear. And it looks like I'll get 2 times v times u. And then for the second part, again, I'll take the partial derivative of the z function with respect to y. So if I take the partial derivative of the z part with respect to y, now I'm treating x like a constant. And again, I'll get 3xy squared. And then it says I need to multiply that by the partial derivative of y with respect to v. So u is a constant, it just disappears. v is my variable. Um, I'm treating e to the w as a constant, so if I take the partial derivative of y with respect to v, I'll simply get e to the w. Okay, And that again will be my partial derivative. Okay, So let me... Uh, let me do the other case here. So we did the partial derivative of z with respect to u. We've done the partial derivative of z with respect to v. Last but not least, hey, we've got the partial derivative of z with respect to w. So same functions um, that we had, same formulas. So now I have to follow the branches down from z down to w. So from z to w. So from z down to w, and over on the other side, I'll follow it down from z down to w. Um, if z depended on three variables, x, y, and q, you would have three branches that you would have to, to use. So again, this is the partial of z with respect to x, the partial of x with respect to w, this is the partial of z with respect to y, and then the partial of y with respect to w. So they kind of look like twos, they're not twos, they're supposed to be partial derivatives. Okay, so it says the partial derivative of z with respect to w, it says I'll take the partial derivative of z with respect to x, and then multiply that by the partial derivative of x with respect to y. And then I add on the partial derivative of z with respect to y, and multiply that by the partial derivative of y with respect to w. Okay, and the, the other part, we actually just calculated the partial of z with respect to x. We said the partial of z with respect to x was just 2x 
plus y cubed. Okay, and now we have to figure out the partial of x with respect to w. So I go up here. So u and v are constants, which means the u v squared is just a constant. When I take the derivative of that with respect to w, it's just going to go away. So I'll be left with 3w squared as my partial derivative of x with respect to w. And then we said the partial derivative of z with respect to y. We just computed that now twice. That'll be 3xy squared. And now I have to take the partial derivative of y with respect to w. Well, I find my y. So u is just a constant. It disappears when I take the derivative of that. v is just a constant. The derivative of e to the w would just be e to the w. So you'll get the term v e to the w right back. Okay, And again, that's going to be your partial derivative of z now with respect to the variable w. Okay. So now we've computed all three partial derivatives. So these tree diagrams I think are very useful. Um, hopefully they'll help you keep things straight. This is definitely you know what I do when I do these. So if you missed the first part of the video, it should be around pretty close. Um, but I'd say it's a good idea to look at that one first. Again, if you need some more help with partial derivatives, I've got a video on that as well because that's obviously pretty crucial to doing these. If you have any questions, send me an email and I'll be happy to get to them whenever I can.